Okay, I'm going to set a piece of aluminum up on the table here and mark these pieces. And we'll cut them out. This material, like all the rest of the material for this project, is going to be 063 thickness and it's 3003H14 alloy. I moved it up a little bit so I have a little bit of extra play. Working with a little bit extra metal is good, never too much. These three pieces I'm going to cut out with my cat shears and then the front two pieces I'll cut out on the bandsaw. Okay, you can see what a great job and a quick job the cat shears do on pieces like this. We'll see you over at the annealing table. You can see it's just a sheet of steel with some angles welded to it. And by placing the metal on top of the angles, when we do the annealing, we don't lose the heat to the table. And I've got a, uh, a rosebud tip. It's ideal for annealing. It provides a lot of heat. Makes the job go quickly. I'm going to turn on a f the torch with a uh, carbon rich or acetylene rich. Put a little deposit of carbon on here. Doesn't have to be on very thick. Now what happens is if we go to a neutral flame and we burn the carbon off it, it will come off at 700 degrees, burn off at 700 degrees, and the metal will be soft. And we'll let it cool on its own. Now it's important that I move the torch from piece to piece so I don't get a lot of heat build up because if I do I'll actually melt the metal. I was just going a little slower than I'd like, so I'm going to go ahead and kick the heat up quite a bit for these front pieces. All right, we've got the five pieces annealed. We're going to let them cool on their own right here in the room. We're not going to quench them. And when, uh, when they're cool, we're ready to do some metal shaping. All right, we're ready to go with some actual metal shaping. What we're going to do is called blocking and smoothing. And I'm going to take these pieces of aluminum, I'm going to knock them out on the bag, and get them very, very close to the, to the shape of the buck. Both pieces, this one and this one, and then I'm going to go to the wheel and smooth them out and eventually they'll be joined along the seam right here. Now this is my original template that I used over earlier to decide the shape of the part I wanted. But I want to draw us a little bit more information from this piece. So what I did, where I saw it wrinkling, I went ahead and cut it. And I'm going to lay it right on the buck where it belongs. It belongs right along the station here and there's a point at the top that matches the length, follows down here, and comes to its length at the bottom, position at the bottom. Now watch what happens when I push it down over the slit spots. I get a real high area here that pokes up. And what's happening, of course, is that's where it's hitting the highest point that I have to shape. It's right there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay this over, and you'll see I've already marked it with a blue black magic marker. I'm going to transfer this line to the metal so that I know exact point to start hammering where the most shape is going to take place. The area around the outside is not going to be stretched. In fact, I'm going to protect that area by putting a reminder mark like this to do not hit this area 
If anything, this area will eventually get shrunk. So you can see how it would really work against me to, uh, to stretch it. 